everyone welcome back to my channel this is nona from the aligndlover.com i have a less analytical video for you today and a more intuitive and association space video i am discussing two concepts or ideas that i really love the kippy types and perfumery so this is based on the associations i make between perfume and the archetypes within the kibi system. I will not be giving you any insight as to how to dress or how to analyze your silhouette. So again, these are just my interpretations and associations. All right, first up, we have the dramatics, the regal lady. Dramatic energy is majestic, it's striking, it's mysterious, imposing, and powerful. The first perfume that comes to mind is Tom Ford's Black Orchid. It's potent, it's commanding, it's very charismatic when used by the right person with the right chemistry. So this scent has notes of woody incense, it's spicy floral, and it has truffle and orchid. Um, those notes can be a little polarizing, the truffle can be a little too dirty and earthy to some, the orchid a bit screechy. So make sure it works on your skin, but when it works, it's really beautiful, it lingers, it makes a statement, so use with confidence. Next up, we have Byrito's Black Saffron, definitely more gentle in terms of sillage. It's got lovely saffron, more aromatic, herby, juniper, leather, violets, vetiver, and juicy raspberry. It's dark, it's edgy, it's intense, it's very mysterious and cool. And lastly, we have Calvin Klein's Euphoria. It's a woody amber floral with orchid, juicy pomegranate, violet, and deep mahogany. On the right person, it's very intoxicating and boldly sensual. On the wrong person, it smells like dried up synthetic juice. Next up, we have the soft dramatic Steve It Chic. So the energy is bold, sensual, and lavish. The first one that comes to mind is Armani Privé's Rouge Malachite. This is an amber floral with very heady tuberose and jasmine. It's dense, it's lush, it's intoxicating. It leaves a lovely blooming trail behind you. The next one is Narcisa Rodriguez for her. This is a woody amber musk. It's deep, seductive, sweet, and provocative. It's got this lovely osmanthus note that gives a milky, creamy sensuality. And the orange blossom in this one is very indolic. It's carnal and animalic so this is a very sensual head turner and lastly we have bottega veneta's bottega veneta it's a little bit more appropriate for daytime wear but also works super well for nighttime and dates this is leathery fresh spicy and green all at once it's very elegant confident and it smells very luxurious. Next up, we have the Flamboyant Naturals, the Free Spirit Chic Energy. It's fresh, direct, free-spirited, and bold. The first one that comes to mind is Byrito's Bad Afrique. It's a fresh, amber, woody scent. It's just so remarkable, charming, happy, radiant, golden, warm, free-spirited. This is such a pleasant scent and it has a lot of mass appeal. It's a people pleaser, but it's not generic. It's very unique and lovely. This is just such a great scent, probably one of the most popular scents from Byrito. Next, we have Diptyque's Velocicos, one of my favorite fragrances of all time. So it's woody, aromatic, fig and sandalwood create a very fresh, creamy, addictive scent. It's not complicated, but it doesn't have to be. It's just so lovely. The more you smell it, the more you want of it. You just want to kind of like bathe in it um, and it never gets overwhelming or heavy or old. So one of my favorites and the candle is amazing. And then lastly, we have a more polarizing scent from Lush. We have Karma. It's very aromatic, herbal, woodsy. It's got bright orange and lemongrass that kind of balances out a more oily resin and patchouli scent. This makes me think of 90s cool girl ahead of her time, probably the first one to shop at Whole Foods. Okay, next up, we have the soft, natural, sensual, fresh lady. So fresh, free-spirited, sexy, and radiant energy. The first one I thought of is... Estate Lauder's Bronze Goddess. It's a sultry, beachy, amber floral. It's got lovely vanilla, coconut, and amber notes. Tiare flower, which is a very lush tropical flower, and sandalwood. And it creates an almost visceral, suntanned aura around you. It's just one of those fragrances that 
transports you to another time and place. Another soft, natural, kind of vibing, essence-y fragrance is Dior's J'adore. It's a balmy, radiant jasmine. It's balmy, but not overly carnal and animalic. It's got a more fresh kind of radiance to it. And I think this is a very versatile scent. I can see so many different women wearing this, different occasions, different levels of maturity. Um, it's just a really lovely sensual option. And lastly, we have by Rito's Gypsy Water. It's aromatic, fresh, witty. It's uplifting, yet grounding. I imagine um, this perfume captures what it smells like to stand in the middle of the forest, but you're halfway in an incense or head shop. I don't know why that would be in the middle of the forest, but that's the picture I'm getting. Okay, next up, we have the Dramatic Classics Tailored Chic. So the energy is elegant, sleek, charismatic, and refined, but it's also bold, classic with that dramatic, regal, striking undercurrent. So the most understated of the three, I have here Tom Ford's Santal Blush. Spicy, witty, skin-like, elegant scent. Some people say it smells like Lilabo Santal 33. I think this one is a little bit more smooth and um, grounded, a little bit more rounded out, a little bit more earthy. Definitely more of like a suede feel to this one, whereas with Lilabo, I get a slightly more like polished leather feel. Um, the next one is Gris Chanel from BTK Parfum. This is an amber spicy perfume. It's got tea, cardamom, fig, and sandalwood. It's spicy, warm, deep, but it's not overly syrupy. It's got that elegance. It's got that balance to it. But be careful, it has cardamom. And for some people, cardamom can be a little screechy, oily, and metallic. And lastly, we have Kenzo Jungle L'Elephant, one of my favorite scents. It can be super spicy, warm, and aromatic, but it has this like specific balance to it. On the right person, it smells regally composed, like it's not overly lush, it's not overly spicy, it's just tiptoeing the line between too much and like purposely held back. Um, but be careful, this one has cumin, so on some people, cumin smells like body odor, on others, it smells delightfully earthy. Alright, so now we have soft classics, graceful, and elegant lady. So the energy is elegant, poised, understated, and graceful. The first one that comes to mind is Maison Marie-Louise Bois de Balancourt. It is spicy, woody, clean, it is a skin scent, but with more elegance and depth. It's kind of like Tom Ford's Santal Blush, but more floaty, a little bit more ethereal and light. This is just such a beautiful scent. For some people, it can be a little bit boring, but on the right skin, it blooms with this very subtle complexity. Next, we have Jo Malone's Peony and Blush Suede. It's floral, fresh suede. It has an apple note to give crispness, and then the suede rounds out the scent. It's just so pleasant and lovely, and I feel like this smells good on anyone of any age, and it's just very delightful. And lastly, we have a Chanel. We have Chanel Gabrielle. It is sweet, floral, refined. It's very balanced. Like a lot of Chanel fragrances, it's hard to pick out very, very isolated notes because the Chanel signature is just very blended. Um, but this one is my favorite from the line. Just I think it just has that extra specialness to it, that extra bit of sweet luxury. All right, next up we have the flamboyant Gamines Sassy Chic. So the energy is bold, electric, lively, and spunky. I am giving them my favorites perfume or at least one of my favorites the first perfume i ever bought it is lodil lampica's c if you like really interesting unique and playful scents definitely check out the lolita lampica line so c is spicy sassy it's deep it's fun it's got that contrast like it means the pink pepper makes it zesty but the sweet pea gives it this lightness and naivete 
it's bold it's electric and it kind of looks like the bottle so this is the bottle and it looks like there's wind or a breeze sweeping the scarf so this scent smells like it's moving all right next up we have mfk's baccarat rouge 540 and the reason i am giving this to the flamboyant gamines is because I think that kind of sassy chic energy really brings out the beauty of this fragrance. This is a very expensive fragrance and if your skin doesn't make it bloom and it doesn't bring out the complexity, then I think it's not a great investment or a great choice to make. I smelled this on someone and it honestly just smelled very sugary and it lacked the amazing potential. Um, so make sure this really blooms on you, but it's got this lovely sweet depth. It's got almond. It's got like woody notes. It's got, I think, pine or I don't know, just something magical about it. And it's that little bit of contrast that really blooms with this flamboyant commune energy. And lastly, we have Dior's Hypnotic Poison. On some people, it's a really fun root beer, sarsaparilla, fizzy, deep vanilla on others it's play-doh so make sure it works on you we have soft gamine spit fire chic the energy is spunky lively sweet and playful might be a little biased because these are all my favorite perfumes um we have the first run from etat libre d'orange like this so tilda swinton worked on this and she wanted to infuse the scents with a childhood memory so she put in pumpkin super unique i love this scent so much it's effervescent lively zesty spicy and snuggly it's got movement to it but it's really sweet and cuddly at the same time so it does make me think of soft gamines that gamine spunky energy with that extra romantic energy next we have killian's i don't need a prince by my side to be a princess it's amber vanilla with like 90s aromatic ginger and lemon. It's sweet, it's spicy, it's really interesting. I love this one. And then we have another one from Etat Libre d'Orange. It's you or someone like you. It's a fizzy mint cocktail. It's just so fresh, so sweet, so fun. One of my favorites. All right, now we have theatrical romantic femme fatale chic so the energy is dreamy it's sensual it's sophisticated it's also romantic the first one that comes to mind is versace's crystal noir it's a dark sheer coconut amber cool kind of fragrance it's sweet it's deep it's aloof but it's also very enticing i love this one it's like a gothic coconut amber smell um and speaking of to that femme fatale chic energy men really love this one they don't know why they can't tell me what they like so much about it but they really love it so um if that helps you engage that femme fatale chic energy i think it's a lovely choice the next one is tom ford jasmine rouge it is a heady seductive mysterious floral fragrance it kind of plays with you it's like a phantom fragrance sometimes and it's very held back and cool and then you get another whiff of it and it blooms and it's more warm so it gives you like hot and cold treatment. And then we have Lush Lust. It's a very, very carnal, very indolic jasmine on the right skin. Um, otherwise, it's a little suffocating and it smells like stuck, like it hasn't bloomed or blossomed but on the right person it is very very sensual okay we have the romantics the dream spinners so the energy is dreamy sensual sweet gentle and enchanting the first one that comes to mind is from parfum de marley it is delina it's rosy lychee rhubarb pink femininity it's so romantic on the right person it really blooms it's wispy it's ethereal it's um a little bit sparkly it's very glimmery it's just such a lovely feminine scent on the wrong person it can be a little sour a little screechy the next one is mon guerlain from guerlain it's vanilla lavender soft elegance it's very genteel it's like lovely, calming, well-composed feminine clouds. 
And then we have Flower Bomb from Victor and Rolf. It's flirty, it's floral, it's sweet. On the wrong person, it's too loud and generic, but on the right person, it's very enticing. It really blooms and it kind of like beckons you to come closer. So that was it for this little association space video. If you have a favorite perfume or if you associate certain perfumes um, with certain types or energies or archetypes, whatever, I want to know. I'm super curious about it. Um, I think that's my favorite part of perfume. It's just so different for everybody. So um, I will see you in the next video.